<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Saturday edition of Half Decaf and a Shot of Cane, formerly known as Coffee and Conversations. We are, you are visiting with Plenary Easton 2020. We're located in the Talbot Town Shopping Center this year due to COVID-19 uh, epidemic, a pandemic. And uh, what we're trying to do here is introduce you to some artists virtually so you don't you don't feel like you want to come in and look at the, the exhibit in person. You can see it online. And uh, again, if you want to purchase anything or get a closer look at any paintings, you can call the number that Nick will be flashing on the line on the, on the, on the screen. And we'll be glad to bring a painting out to your car on the curb side here. Or if you live locally, we'll actually bring it to your house. We actually sold two paintings last night that way. Um, I'm actually taking it to somebody's house, setting it in their house. And I guess they couldn't hold back and purchased. So um, please feel free to take advantage of that this year in a very, very different, unique, but what has been, I think, a rewarding uh, plenary Easton. Would you say so, Dave? We're with David Diaz. Uh, Dave, where are you from, and what do you think about uh, this year's event? Uh, I'm from Annapolis, and uh, I you know I thought this. I was wondering how it was going to go. I've not gone to a virtual one before, so this was perfect. I mean, they had planned it out perfectly. They had specific events and how many people could be there, and it just became uh, actually relaxed. And so it was a very easy, and we did all the paintings we always did, but it was a yeah, very calm approach. These so, are David's works behind us. We're going to get to those and talk about those in a few minutes. Um, I love your work, David. I'm, I'm just getting to know David as, as you are uh, during this interview. Um, there might be a little bit of a background noise. That's because uh, somebody was getting a soda there just a second ago. And um, there's more people, there's more visitors today on a Saturday. Uh, David, I wanted to ask you specifically, this should be a great story. I guess it's kind of a uh, one with some trepidation. And you, were, you were at a plein air event at the beginning of the of the pandemic and you want to talk, tell people about that what oh, happened there okay well it was actually a, 10 of us 10 people 10 artists decided to just take a trip to patagonia and paint uh on our own just wherever we wanted but we had specific places to go and we took off uh well we it was it was in march but nothing was really going on that was serious yet so we just flew into uh had a, we all we flew in halfway down actually and then we got a car rented a car and then we found out that we had to be quarantined for two weeks when we once got, you there. got there once we got there we found out this is in full tilt here but and they are very serious in argentina you don't go out you don't do this you don't, but we had a place called uh well the town we ended up in a near was uh el Captain, and uh we we had a small hotel right at the edge of their glacial national park and it was within those gates so we couldn't go out the gates but we were allowed to roam free so we were actually able to go up into the hills and walk around the, near the park and uh, paint. Is this a populated area that a lot of people? Not at all. I mean it's populated in the, um, and they say in the summer uh, because it's just crowds going by that little hotel but now it was more uh, desolate because they closed the parks down so you couldn't go into the actual park but uh, they allowed us to uh, have like free roam so we couldn't go anywhere else except there for two weeks and, right. okay. and, and they they closed the airport down where we were trying to leave from the oh, and, wow. which so we couldn't get home that way so we're, there was the lady who sort of set it up uh, she she was on the phone a lot, trying to get booking and airlines. We probably uh, bought tickets about eight or ten times and had them canceled. You were trying to get out? We were trying to get out. At the end of two weeks, we were trying to get out. And so, because that's when we were flying out. We were, fin we were technically supposed to leave anyway. So as it turns out, though, uh, we had... Um, in order to, to get out, you needed a lot of things. You needed a health document, which we were able to get, and we needed a passage through different counties because 
there would be roadblocks. And how many people were there again? There were ten. All traveling, trying to get out All together traveling, at the same time. Yes, and they knew there were ten of us coming to this one. There was another tiny airport about six hours away by, no, eight hours away by car. Uh -huh. And it would be, we would be the last one out of that one. So uh, we got up at four in the morning and drove through the night and uh, or the early morning, but uh, yeah, stopped. They checked the cars, checked our documents. Uh, it's like a, being in an old World War II movie where you're trying to get out. <laughs> yeah, to the checkpoint. Yeah. yeah, but that, well, we, then we got to there and we flew there another nine hours to uh, Buenos Aires. And as soon as we got there, we were driven immediately to a hotel in town center. Nothing on the streets, nothing, except some armed police. They were very serious in Buenos Aires. You didn't go out. We got to the hotel. They checked our documents again. They had guards at the hotel. And they're they, checking your temperature. Oh, they checked yes before you got on. And oh, the thing about leaving the little outpost airport, they they closed as soon as we left. But they checked our air, well, they were checking our temperature, and we knew if one of us, one of us had a raised temperature, we would all have to stay. Right. So it was kind of a little nervous time. But I mean, the painting was great there. It was just the because we had to stay an extra week then in the hotel uh, while they were trying to set up an, a How long flight. did it take you? So how long was the time to get out? Uh, well, we got to, when we got to the uh, airport, Buenos Aires, it was another five days. Five they days? Ke they kept putting it off. They kept saying, no, tomorrow, tomorrow, work. then two days from now, then tomorrow. We're thinking, is, is there really a plane there? But yes, they were waiting for a few other Americans from... Was it scary? It was a little disturbing because you weren't sure if you go out. And they actually said, uh, this is the last plane. And if you all don't get out now, you, it, you might be here till September. And we're thinking, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's not the answer. <laughs> and the airport was absolutely uh, no one in it. Uh, you're, you know, you're in an international airport with just uh, the people getting on the plane. As it turns out, they had brought other planes in after we left. But it was the, I don't know if you remember, the old Eastern Airline? Yeah, 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 Eastern Airline. I think they're still using the old Eastern Airline plane. Yeah, but that's yeah. what we flew out in. Yes, a, a, another 10 hour flight. <laughs> right. Sometimes they're the safest. Sometimes the old, the old guys are the safest. Um, have you followed what's been going on in that area since you left in, the, in, the, in, the, in terms of I uh, have, the, because the infections, the, that sort of thing? Uh, not so much, but they, uh, the, in, what is it, I mean, in parts of uh, Argentina, they did have uh, some issues. In the cities, but even that was milder because they completely shut down. Was that right? Yeah, and down where we were, that where there were so many, it was very open spaces. Yeah. Uh, that's a good, Jessica told me about that story. Yeah. That, well, that's, that, that's some nice color for uh, for leading into your paintings. David, how long have you been painting? Uh, full time, fifteen years. Uh huh. Uh, I, was, I was I taught art before that. Where Where did you teach art? In uh, Anne Arundel County. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what made you make the jump from say? leaving your teaching career to going full-time with the were you just selling so much that you were like this is going to work no it was that i uh i actually was i i i taught but i actually had just a uh, degree in painting and drawing uh -huh. so i thought you know i should i should do this before i accidentally die <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a studio in Annapolis? I have it in my, I, I converted my um, summer porch into a studio by putting in some heaters in the ceiling and some, uh, actually that's pretty much it. I just needed that because it's all glass. Right, great. Mm -hmm. Well, David, I've got to say, you know, I've seen your name here, uh, you know, a couple of years. How long, how many times have you been This is the third year. Third year, I was going to mm -hmm. say. Um, I, I really love this work. Um, oh, thank you. I, I don't know how. How do you describe yourself as a painter? Uh, a contemporary realist or an impressionist. Uh, uh, I think it's in that range. I would say, yeah. Why do you do it, David? Uh, I really love to do it. Uh, basically, I really love. Cause, you know, it's 
everything's a new thing. You're standing in something new every time. You, everything you face is searching out, like finding uh, that little couple little buildings that were just sitting along the water and thinking, I, I really like that, but can I make a painting out of it? Uh -huh. uh, can, will it, will it, can I interpret it the way I want to interpret it? So I think that's it. Can I interpret it the way I, I think it should look? Uh, Let, let's talk about this first. I love the, the light. And the, uh, what time of day was this? When morning. You did this? That was morning. Is this done here? Uh, this was done here. This, excuse me for folding with this. That's I, okay. I put on a new mask and it's pulling down as I talk. Americans <laughs> aren't used to wearing masks yet. It's all <laughs> really fine. Yes, and I, I usually have one that just stays up there, but this is new. Uh, I'm sorry. Why did What's I, the name of this painting? Oh, a, a morning light. Morning light? Yeah, and I did it. Um, it's it's in Oxford, Oxford, and I wanted to. Uh, I didn't want to just do. Uh, we've had these great blue skies this whole time, but I wanted to get a feel of a bit of the heat and humidity, the feel of uh, warmth, uh -huh. how much was there, it saturated air. So I I pushed it a little into the uh, warmer yellow rather than blue sky. Right. which would have cooled it down. It's lovely. I think when you talk about plein air capturing the light, I mean, that's just a wonderful, wonderful job there. It's a beautiful piece. Oh, um, thank you, thank you. And uh, where, where, how about this one back here? This one is, both of these were Tillman. Tillman Island? Yes, and this one was, I came down one day a couple of days early and painted it because I didn't know if I'd have time. And right before the Tillman Brig Bridge, on this side, oh, these are across the bridge in Tillman. Okay. These, uh, if you go into the, uh, there's a bit of land and a uh, marina on the other side, and you can look across and see these these crab houses. And this is actually, I think, more a working. Uh, uh, boat facility but they're kind of right next to each other very different days very different days yes how do you capture the mood in those because uh, we're going to get to the to the to the to the greenery here in a second but your exteriors really have a have a nice mood to them i don't i don't know if it's uh uh thank you uh, first <laughs> no i uh i i i, I kind of go for that i don't want to I've been trying to move past just depicting exactness. Okay. Because I used to actually paint very exacting and uh, at thir 15 years ago, and I wanted to show, get a feel of the building and its setting, and soften things with the atmosphere in it. And you're very atmospheric. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. No. And uh, I, I some. I chose the building because of the feel of the, I love the old buildings. That's is that, why, is that, is that really, it looks like a, from here it looks like a crooked hat. Is it, is, is the, uh, the, the roof really that crooked? Is it, that, it is sinks it? in, yeah, it sinks in the middle. I may have pushed it a little. Because <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it and thought, this thing might not be here another year. I painted it the last time I was here too. Is that right? right. And I just I love the old uh, structures of the horizontals and the verticals, and then there's a bit of color left. It's also it, got a little island feel to it. To yeah, me a little it, bit. it does. If I had put a little tiki hut out back, it would. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No, it's wonderful. And then the, the sort of the, again the atmosphere on that on that on that uh, that working building. The working, too. Yeah, that one. That one's in the afternoon, and it was it wasn't that dark. But it had, there's a certain age to this thing. The, this little outbuilding was like a thing sitting on their pier. It right. wasn't like, uh, I'm not sure what the structure was. I didn't have, unfortunately, I didn't have time to go over and find out. Uh, but it, it the app, I was just kind of going for a mood that said there's age to it and there's history to it rather than there's this bright, Thing here and sitting on the water because right. it it is a it is a, a kind of a bit of a beat up looking building too. Right. Uh, I mean they're working with it, but it's still a building that's been used for decades. Maybe. Yeah, it's still working, right? It's exactly, still working, yeah. which is what I like to get. These I've done a, a show once before that was called Still Working, and it was all places that were standing, some right, right. somewhat standing. Yes. 
And then let's move over here to the greeting. Now, just so you know, the audience is seeing, the, the, in the virtual land, they're actually seeing images that there's, that we've actually, uh, the actual picture. Oh, the, so oh, the image of it. They're seeing them closer as well. Uh -huh. um, Okay. Let's go to let's go to the big one here. All let's right. Go to this, uh, we were, what kind of flowers are those? That is a, uh, a scotch broom. Scotch, scotch brooms broom. grow along the road wild. That's in my yard, uh -huh. actually. Uh, we were uh, I should say we were allowed to bring three from home this you, year. You painted this. And I, I took my whole big easel. I don't have any. I, my easel can accommodate this, but I took my indoor easel out and sat it at the top of my hill because I planted it and it was just in the wind and it just, this year it just bloomed unbelievably and it was these hot colors against the cool trees in the background. It was the, the light hitting it in the, in the uh, mid morning, I guess. It's very lovely. How do you name a painting? Sometimes I'm cryptic, but this one I just called Russian. <laughs> I mean, I, I called it like it is. Right. Sky's broom. I was going for scarlet something. Uh, what can I, uh, no. Don't 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 waste more time on that. That's good. <laughs> right, right. But sometimes it's sometimes strangely, uh, it's the simple as I love your title, and that's what helps sell it. Yeah, the title, sure, yeah. Yeah, because the one, that, the two that sold already had different kinds of titles that were more uh, uh, keeping watch with the lighthouse. Has, has the pandemic uh, changed anything, your approach at all? Do you see a difference in your painting, even maybe even from naming it to actually putting paint on the, on the, on the canvas? Uh, and it may not so much in it, I don't know if it did. It may be made me more, you're more introspective because you know you're, especially when I started and everything was locked down, they're kind of there. You're not, you know, we're supposed to leave home much. Right. So you, you started looking at things a little closer around that. What, oh, that could be something that right. you've looked at for a while. And then you all of a sudden think, let me. I'm let me actually think. surprised there are no squirrel or bird paintings here. <laughs> and there were enough squirrels. Or birds. We, I, actually, right there where the little girl was sitting in I the was background, say this, right, yeah. she was sitting with a pole she's at, uh, is the bird feeder outside my kitchen door that's yes and uh, so I, they were only not there because i was there right, they're yeah. there every other minute yeah sure yeah so you want to talk about that painting a little bit uh i have uh, young neighbors and they have two young kids she's going to be like two and her brother's going to be four so they come over occasionally and watch me paint uh, oh yeah it's taken a while to get them used to, to the fact that this is what you do, you know. So I, it's good for I them to see. Yeah, and because they couldn't get the concept, can I paint too? Okay. Can I use? I said, well, not today, because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I need this. I'm actually doing something. But uh, she just came in with her little red water bottle, and, and and it was like she knew where to pose. It was the strangest thing. She walked over and sat there and stayed still. Uh, is that a bonus when a person walks into something that you're, no, that you're I, doing? Yeah, I, I like to put people in. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I really do. It gives uh, the painting another whole sort of well, theme. Well, in some people, there's a couple sides of that, and it was about that plant the, in front. Uh, right. Sure. But when you put a person in it, it then becomes something else. Then it's about the person. It's about why are they there? Who are they? What are they doing? Uh, because so you got to be careful. I think about if I'd have put a person in here, uh, it'd have been a, or here there was a person I was tempted to, and they were carrying a bushel of crab going in, and I'm thinking, no, then it's about them. Right. What are they doing? Who are they? You know. Sure. So I. It, it, I put them on a street sometimes because it's in the city. And otherwise, it looks like it was some sort of a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so it, it's it's a cautionary thing. Some people don't because they want it to be about the thing. If there were people in here standing, I, I love your work. I'm so glad to have gotten to uh, talk to you about this. Like I said, we don't get to see all the artists, right? And this year in particular uh, was a little bit tougher because there weren't as many gathering events where we Correct. get out and, you know, to certain areas yeah. to see. So I love your work. I'm, I'm really glad we got to show this off to people. Um, Thank you. What, do you have anything that, why do you think you, 
it's important to pursue art, buy art. Have you oh. offered anyone? For the answer to pursuing art and buying art, meaning, meaning the same type of people doing that, or just in just to, uh, I what does it do for you, and, and what have you seen it do for customers who who bought paintings from you, and, and just in general, customers tend to buy things that 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 draw them in, that make them feel good, that when they know that they're they the one I sold or the bicycle that used to hang on the back wall. Yeah, that's right. I saw that. That was that was nice too. Yeah. And the lady, I met her, and she was coming through, and she said, "Oh, that's you." I said, "Yeah." And I told her where it was, and she goes, "That's the same alley I walk through every day, and I I, I, I love that spot. I love going through these alleys." And I said, "So sometimes it's a it's a tie-in, emotional tie-in like that, and they just want to have it as part of their life, and it just kind of softens their life. It it makes it easier sometimes." I. Uh, one lady who bought a piece, uh, not at this event yet, cause, but uh, she she said it, it was in her kitchen, and I said, well, that it wasn't a kitchen type of painting, but that's okay. What, you have to ask yourself, what is a kitchen type of painting? But she put it there so that she said every morning I get up, I look at it, and I kind of feel inspired by the app, the whole image. I love that about paintings too. Yeah. I gotta say, we have a few of them that we bought here, and uh, it really does get you going. I mean, Kurt said it yesterday. He was like, "It will never let you down. Uh -uh. If you love it, you know, you're gonna love it forever." And, and it's right. So, and I'm sure that you. you done that for many many of people who uh, oh, and love when, your work the thing that about it is when they tell you that that's very meaningful it's not just a casual remark it's it, it's something that's kind of personal then when yeah. they tell that to you yeah that's great yeah. great David thank you very much for coming on today driving up from Annapolis all of these paintings are for sale and able ready to be purchased at Plenary East in 2020 um, I believe the number is probably on the lower third there you can call that number if you want to see these cl uh, closer. They are in our online gallery, which is at Plenary uh, Easton on Facebook. I believe it's on our webpage at PlenaryEaston.com. It's also on the Avalon staff page on Facebook. And uh, again, if you want to, so you can look closer there. If you want to drive in, give us a call. We'll bring the paintings outside curbside to you. But it, also, if you need us to bring them to your house and show you, you want to check them, see what they look like on a wall. If you live locally, we'll be glad to do that as well. David, any final words? No, that's all. I hope I, I hope. How's the event been this year? Hmm? How's the, how would you how did you like the event this year? I really enjoyed it. I really did. I, uh, I, I like I said, it was, it was a very relaxed affair. I mean, sometimes you, we sometimes there's so much going on that you feel you're a little tension. Right. Oh, sure. I, I'm sure there are any plenty of painters who have been to Plenary East and hearing how much of a relaxed affair it is. We'll probably get a little chuckle out of that, but it has definitely been. <laughs> and, and the weather was not awful. <laughs> I know, the weather. It's, what can you say about 2020? <laughs> you just, you can't say Thank you all very much for watching. We'll catch you at 3 o'clock. We'll be back. I think we're going to be talking to John Brandon Sills at 3 o'clock today. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay cool. We'll see you next time.